In the 15th century, Northern Europe began to experience political power and capitalism as kings consolidated their authority and European capitalism emerged. This thriving commerce, industry, power, and finance contributed to the evolution of cities, and as populations grew, the art flourished. Northern European art during the 15th century demonstrated the dynamic relationship between art and its historical context, the way art both reflects and contributes to historical development and focuses on the major aspects of life at that time, piety and power. Seen behind me is the infamous Marod altarpiece painted no other than the master of Flamel himself, Robert Campin. Like most triptychs commissioned at the time, once for private use were notably smaller as this altarpiece. The central panel measures only two feet in length. The depicted objects in the panel, like the bench and the scene in the background, identify it as a Flemish setting. Yet this altarpiece seems unproportioned, for it depicts atmospheric perspective and the figures seem too large to fit in their panels. Now, it is time for the art to speak for itself, for I believe it has much to say. My name is Peter Inglebert, and I am a cloth merchant who is part of the bourgeoisie. I commissioned this piece because I wanted to show within my household that I am devoted to my religion. Many of us in the bourgeoisie are interested in bringing the divine to our own home. My last name, Inglebrecht, translates to angel bringer, hence my choice to have the Annunciation depicted in this triptych. Standing behind me in this painting is my first of three wives and our attendant. Some people suspected that the attendant might be a town messenger. My wife's last name translates to cabinet maker, which is why I wanted to have a carpenter incorporated into this piece. As you can see here, I am looking through a door into Mary's room in the garden. The fact that the door does not go to the virgin side has been understood to symbolize my personal desire to access the divine, but that Mary lives in a secluded world. I'm the virgin. Seated behind a 16-sided table, which represents the 16 Hebrew prophets, or what could be an altar, with the scroll and the book, which are reminiscent of the Old and New Testaments, and the part that Mary and child Christ play in the fulfillment of the prophecy. These are lilies in the earthen way wearing veins here, representing my virginity. These line finials refer to the seat of wisdom, the throne of Solomon. The coalescence of these arrangements, namely this copper kettle and the towel, further stand as blueprints of my purity, and most importantly, encourage the purification of the priests prior to the commencement of their mass. I sit on the floor to reinforce my humility. Finally, these folds on my dress, onto which the light falls in the shape of a star, encapsulate my eminent divine identity. My name is Joseph. Mary's husband and a carpenter. The painting stresses the carpentry aspect. This can allow the 15th century Flemish men be able to connect with me who worked hard on this craft. The tools that I am working with symbolizes the passion of Christ. The setting is filled with everyday objects that serve as symbols. The mouse trap symbolizes that Christ will trap the devil and defeat him. Through the window, you can see the town, where everyone is doing their everyday tasks. This shows that the people in Jerusalem were unaware of the miracle birth that was going to happen. 